In this video, I'm going to show you how to add different sound areas to your game. So different music will play if you go to a different area. So if we go over here into the desert area, you'll be able to hear the music. But if we go over here to the water section, you'll hear different music. And if we head over here by the cars, you'll hear something different as well. So let's get started. So the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is go into the workspace here and create a folder. Okay, this is going to be where we store um, all of the parts and these parts are going to show the regions where our sounds are going to play. Okay, so I'm gonna have three regions, but if you want more than that, then you can keep adding these parts uh, as I show you now. So inside of the folder, well, first we'll go ahead and just name it sound regions like this. And once we've done that, we can now insert a part. So click over here at the top, click on part, and uh, then press F to teleport your camera to it. Now, the way this is gonna work is we're going to use this part and we're gonna drag it so that it covers the entire region, okay? So if we want it to cover this desert area, then I can just move it and uh, scale it so that it covers the entire desert area here. And as well as that, I'm gonna make sure that it covers it on the uh, Y axis as well. So everything in the region is completely covered, even underneath it as well. So if you go you know, on higher ground, then you're still in, in the region here, okay? So this is gonna be our sound region for the desert area. So uh, give it a name, uh, so I'm gonna call it a desert area. I'm gonna make it anchored. Set can collide to unchecked so the players can walk through it and then you can set transparency to one but i'm going to keep it at zero for now just to show you it working now once you've done that if you want to set up another region then we can just duplicate this part and drag it somewhere else you can also whoops um, you can also scale it down so we can fit it on and then just scale it out again to cover the entire region so the music will only play if the player is inside of this part so just drag it down, and I'm going to make it uh, there, okay? So if they're in the water or if they're near it, then they're going to get uh, some different music played. So this is going to be called the water area. Now the names that you call are up to you, but uh, I would keep them simple and rememberable so you know which region is which. And lastly, we're going to do this area over here. So I'm going to duplicate the part again. I'm going to drag it over here. Now if it goes um, a bit funny, uh, different uh, rotation, don't worry, just scale it down. You can hold down shift as well when you're scaling and make it flat and then just cover a new region here. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure it covers everything and we'll drag it below the base as well so that everything gets uh, covered by it and a bit above as well. Okay, so that's the third region done and I'm going to call this region sand area. Okay, and just like the other two regions, make sure that it's anchored and can collide is set to false, so unchecked. Okay, now that we've done that, we can go and start scripting this now. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a sound for each area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the starter GUI here, and I'm going to insert a sound. Okay, what we'll also do is we'll insert a folder as well, so we can store all of these sounds. So the folder is going to be called um, region region sounds or, or sound regions let's call it sound regions because that's what we called our other folder so for each um, sound region here we're gonna have a sound in this folder in our starter GUI which is named the same as the part okay so the sound that's gonna be played in the desert area is gonna be called desert area okay so name it desert area and it has to be uh, spelled correctly as well, so exactly the same as Desert Area up here, and make sure it has a capital D and capital A. So Desert Area, and drag it into your Sound Regions folder in Starter GUI. Now, we're going to need to find a sound for this, so I'm going to go to the Roblox Develop page. I'm going to click on, or Create. I'm going to click on Library, then Audio, and I'm going to search for a sound. So we've got Kevin McLeod here, who provides some copyright-free um, music. 
uh, to so uh, shout out to him. Thanks for uh, thanks for that. So I've chosen a few, and I'm just going to copy the ID here. So the the numbers after library. I'm going to copy those, and I'm just going to paste it into the sound ID property here. Okay, and that is going to um, Roblox is going to find the sound, and it's going to come up saying RBX asset ID. And if you play it, you should be able to hear it. Okay, I, I think it's I think my sound's currently muted, um, but it will play. Uh, when we go into the region, when we script it soon. So I'm just going to do the same thing for the other two regions. So we're going to just uh, duplicate this by pressing Control D twice. Now this one's going to be called the sand area because that's the area over here and the water area. All right. So you need to make sure the sound names are exactly the same as what you've named the parts over here. Okay. So now we've done this, I'm going to add a different sound ID to each uh, sound so they all play different things. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now they all play different sounds. We can begin scripting them. So let's create a local script in Starter GUI here, and this is where we're going to just code the music to check if the player is within that region. So we're going to be using region three. So uh, that basically checks uh, a region from two points, and if a player is inside of the region, we can play some music. So firstly, we're going to define a variable for the sound regions folder that is in the workspace for our parts. So local um, sound, regions, and then we'll put workspace so we know which one it is, which folder it is, uh, either in the workspace or the starter GUI, equals game dot workspace dot sound regions. Okay. Uh, you could say, actually, we will say wait for child here. Colon, wait for child sound regions. Okay, so that just makes sure that the sound regions have loaded in before we actually start running the code. We're also going to have a variable here for um, found. Now we're going to set that to false to begin with, but uh, we're doing this because we're going to check through each region, and once we've found a player in one of those regions, we'll set found to true. And then once we've looped through them all, if it is true, then we won't stop them from playing. Okay? So and we'll either start the sounds or stop them from playing, and this will make sense um, soon. So we're going to create a while loop. Okay, so a while loop just runs code uh, indefinitely, so forever until something specific happens. So we're going to say while wait one do, and anything inside of this this while loop is going to just repeat over and over again with a one second delay. Okay, between each time it repeats. So we've got the wait one here, which is a one second wait. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a for loop through each sound region. So for i, comma v in pairs, this is how we do a for loop. And then we're going to say sound regions workspace. And to get all of the regions, all these parts inside of that folder, we can say colon get children. All right. Now get children returns a table with all of those uh, those parts in there. Okay. So we're going to say do after that, and i is the number of uh, iterations or times it's looped. Uh, v is the current part which it's looping through. And if we do something to V, it's going to happen, it's going to do that to the, the um, current part that it's looping through. So for each part, we want to check to see if the player is in it. Okay, so we then are going to just firstly set found to false, uh, because if we set it to true previously, we want to reset it now. All right, and, and it will all make sense soon, this all, this all found stuff. Um, but we're going to say local region because we're going to create a region three. Now a region three is it's it's kind of like a, a a cube, okay? So imagine this is this is our region. It's made up of uh, one point over here and another point over here, okay? And from those two points, it can create a cube, and then we can see if a player is inside that region. So we're going to use these parts, these sound regions, to create a region 3, and then we can check to see if players are within bounds, because touched events, they can be a little bit, um, you know, they, they're not the best for doing this sort of stuff, uh, region 3 is the best way to detect if a player is currently in a region. So we can say local region equals region 3 uh, dot new. and then we need to define the two points, so as I said earlier, two points create a cube. And to get these points from the parts, we can use their position values, and we can take away half of the size from the position, and that will give us um, both 
um, both edges, okay, so both points. So the first point is going to be the current position of the part, take away uh, its half of its size. So you can say v dot position minus v dot size over 2, all right? And that's just going to be the first point. And then the second point is going to be v dot position plus, and then in brackets, we can say v dot size over 2. Uh, v. There we go, v dot size. So um, they're both the same apart from we're subtracting here and adding um, on the second uh, point. So it's going to create two points, and from those two points, the region will be created. So what we can then do is check to see if there's any players inside of that region. So to do that, we can say local parts, because we want to get the, the parts in a region, so the player's body parts. And to do this, we say game.workspace colon find parts in region 3 with whitelist, okay? Because we're only looking for the player's character, no one else. But usually, find parts in region 3 would return everything in there. So it would even return the uh, the cars and the bikes. But we don't want that. We only want to see if the player's uh, character's in there, right? Or any of their body parts. So firstly, we say the region that we're checking. So the region we just defined as a variable. Now, then we're going to do a comma. And we're going to just say the all of the player's body parts. So to do that, we can say player because that is the, the player that this script is going to run on, because it's a local script, and each local script runs on, on each player's computer. So we can get the character from local player, and we can say colon get descendants. So get descendants will return a list of every single item inside of the character, okay? No matter what, if it's nested in another part. So if we were to say get descendants on this model here, instead of just returning the children, it would return every child inside of... of, of um, of each part here and if there was say something else in this mesh it would return that as well so literally everything in that model um, in the players model will be uh, checked to see if it's in the region so we then because the parts um, sorry find parts in region 3 returns a table we then need to loop through that table and see uh, if it is uh, a part from the players body okay so we can say for underscore uh, because we don't need the the iterator uh, in this uh, case, and we've already said what i is over here. We've got a nested for loop. Uh, we can say for underscore comma, but then because we need to know the part which we're currently looping through, because we're going to loop through them all one at a time, we're going to say parts. Although it is up to you, in pairs, and we're going to loop through the parts table. Do so. This is going to loop one by one through the parts table, and then. We want to see if this part is a child of our player. Okay, so we can say find first ancestor, and that will look for uh, the first parent of that uh, of that uh, part, which is called our player's name. Okay, so let me just give you an example here. If we head into the game, and I just say I get my character here, and we're looking at my uh, original size value here. In fact, we'll do this right shoulder uh, motor 60 here. And if we say find first ancestor of Alvin blocks, okay, well, it's going to look for its first parent, which is the right upper arm. And it's going to say, right, is this called Alvin blocks? Uh, okay, no, it's not. So we're going to go to the next parent. Okay, so this part is a child of the model called Alvin blocks. Okay, and there we go, we found it. So the, the first ancestor called Alvin blocks is this model. Okay, so we, we need to say if parts curl on find first ancestor so find first parent pretty much that is called a, a specific name and that name is going to be our player's name so game.players.localplayer.name uh, then so if if there is a, a player found in that region in that table because this part here is um, a part found in the region because it's returned from find parts in region 3 then we can just print that a player was found in the region and we can set found to true because we found a player in a region okay and then we can break out of this for loop because we've already found a player we don't need extra confirmation from the other body parts to say that they're they're there okay uh, else however else if they are not uh, they, there is not an ancestor in that region for any of the parts then found is just gonna keep being set to false and it will never be true right um, because then we can print 
player was not found in region. Okay. So it wasn't found in the region uh, for that specific part. Okay. So the found will be always be set to false. And then outside of here, outside of this, this for loop, we can say if found is equal to true, then we want to start playing some music. Okay. And so what we can do is we can go to the player's player GUI, because everything in the starter GUI is replicated to the player GUI. We can look into this sound regions folder, and we can just find the sound, which has the same name as that region, okay, of, of the, um, because it's it's getting all the children of the sound regions folder in the workspace. We can find the name of that uh, region, and just play the sound with the same name. So we can say if, and then we can say scripts dot parent, and we can say dot, uh, sound regions and then we can say in square brackets the dot name because that's the same name as the region part dot is playing is equal to false so if it's already playing um then so if it's already playing then we won't we won't touch it because you know it's it's already playing and we don't want to restart it again if it's not though if it's not playing already we can say uh, script dot parent dot sound regions and we can say v dot name uh, and we say colon play and that will just start playing that sound and then we can break uh, break out of this for loop up here because we don't want to check the other sound regions because if a player is in one region then there's no way they're going to be in another region at the same time okay unless they're they're together right but they're not so um it's all good so uh we've broken out of here else if they haven't been found let's just put an else here uh, then we're going to just stop the current music. Okay, so script dot parent. Well, we're going to stop playing the music for that specific region if they're not already in it. Okay, if it, even if it wasn't playing already, we can say script dot parent dot sound regions, and we say v dot name colon stop. Okay, and that is all you need to do the sound regions. So let's go ahead and uh, see if it works. I'm going to go and um, just play here. So we're in the middle of the map. And I'm going to give myself a bit of walk speed as well, so that we can just quickly get around the map. So I'm going to set that to 50, and let's go. So we'll run over here, and let's see if the music starts playing. Turn up my sound. Ooh! Uh, it doesn't seem to be, but let's check out the output. There we go. It is playing. And if we run out, then it will stop. And if we go into another region, Starts playing again. Go up here and into another region. There we go, it's playing over here as well. So there we go, we've done our sound regions. Now you don't have to add these prints here, you can comment them out. And that's what I'm gonna do because we know for sure that it works now. And I've done a wait one because these region 3 calculations if we do them all the time then they might start to lag a bit but um, a one second delay is perfectly fine um, because it, it stops the music you know the, uh, the maximum time that the music can be playing if you've left the region is a second okay um, but uh, that's all good and there we go we've just created sound regions so you can now set your parts to be fully transparent and if we then head in again, it will look more realistic. Okay, there we go. And if I head to a new region, it stops playing. I'll leave it. It stops playing. So there we go, guys. We've just created sound regions in Roblox Studio. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for more videos. And if you'd like to take the source code uh, from this video, you can become a channel member by clicking the join button underneath the video next to the subscribe button or by going to alvinblock.com join. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you in the next video.